the latest exhibition on Islamic art in Washington, D.C.'s Freer and Sackler Gallery, which starts on the 24th of October 2009 and runs through the 24th of January 2010, is entitled Fal Nome, The Book of Omens. This exhibition, which is the first of its kind devoted to Fal Nomez, is centered on manuscripts from Safavid Iran and Ottoman Turkey from the 16th century and early 17th centuries and sheds new light on their artistic, cultural, and religious significance. Three days before its opening to the general public, Washington TV was able to get an exclusive interview with Masume Farhad, the chief curator and curator of Islamic art of the gallery who told us what makes the Fall Namez exhibited by the gallery most spectacular and unusual is that unlike earlier varieties, the ones that display at the Freer and Sackler Gallery have images that allow for prognostication. As the, as the word um, indicates, Fall Namez is um, a book of falls um, that were created in the 16th century with pictures. Now, there have been earlier falnames um, that were created without images, but what makes these uh, works that are on display here special and unusual is the fact that now we have images um, that go with the text that allow for prognostication, and that's what makes um, these works stand out among other unillustrated falnames. The art of divination and the interest in fortune telling of future has a long tradition in the Islamic world, which includes consulting the position of the planets, casting horoscopes, or interpreting dreams. But of all these various ways, as this gallery tries to show, the illustrated texts displayed here are the most splendid, as they were done not for the average person, but for members of the elite. They were falchis in Isfahan and elsewhere in Iran, as well as in Istanbul, where ordinary people would go to them, and they had all different kinds of devices to foretell um, not only the future, but sort of the world of the unknown. And um, we also know specifically there are references to books with images, that they actually did use images to, um, for prognostication and to foretell the world of the unknown. But the copies that we see here and the four monumental copies that are on display here were really done for members of the elite. Beside their unusual subject matter, these monumental books are most notable for the brightly painted compositions they display. The exhibition comprises more than 60 works of art from international, public, and private collections and is accompanied by a fully illustrated catalog. Masume further expressed hope that this exhibition would help us learn more about the falnames as a genre. There are four of these large pictorial falnames that have survived. There may have been other ones, but we don't know. They either haven't uh, survived or perhaps there were only four. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know. But perhaps this exhibition will help to find out uh, more about them. Farhad also told us that the team working on this exhibition thinks that the reason for the popularity of these books in the 16th century, according to the Christian calendar, is that it coincided with the Muslim calendar's 10th century, and that the number 1,000 made many think of a new era to come, and what that would entail. One of the reasons that, that um, um, we, and that's the team that sort of worked on this exhibition, think that these falnames were popular in the 16th century was that the 16th century on the Christian calendar was the 10th century on the Islamic calendar. And the year 1000 was very critical. Uh, everyone throughout the Islamic world, in particular in Iran, in um, Ottoman Turkey, believed that the year 1000 um, heralded the end of the world. And um, during this period, there was a great deal of interest in divination, in falls, and hence uh, probably also influenced the creation of these pictorial falnames. One of the copies, which is also the earliest one, and is known as the dispersed falname, was put together in the court of Shah Tahmas Sab I, the second Safavid ruler, in Ghazvin, sometime in the mid-16th century. Although the books were meant as secular texts to guide men to goodness and godliness, the artwork found inside also tells the story of that era's cross-cultural influences. You have um, 
you have these sort of wonderful paintings, and when you look at them, you can tell um, or you can sort of see sort of these moon-faced beauties um, with um, a, a definite sort of undercurrent of Eastern, if not Chinese, influence. You have many of the, um, the pro I see all of the prophets, they all have halos, um, but the halos are actually sort of flickering flames as opposed to the round halos that you find in European paintings. And the source for these um, features and characteristics are coming from Central Asia, from what is now Afghanistan, as well as China, because that really was um, a very important um, sort of source and inspiration for Persian and Ottoman artists going back to the 14th century. The Sackler Gallery's exhibit is actually a collection of different fall nomes brought together by Masume Farhad and her team. One of the challenges they faced was physically bringing the exhibit together. But in doing so, they began to study scripts that were previously forgotten. And then I think the other um, challenge, it's, it's, it's a challenge but also very exciting and fulfilling, is the fact that um, there really has been very, very little work that has been done on these Fan Lames and on, on this tradition. So um, it really was um, sort of an unknown um, field, really try to understand the importance of these um, illustrated texts, um, why they were produced, for whom they were produced, and what they really meant um, in the 16th century, because that's an important aspect um, for any art historian, is, is try to see what, I mean, what they mean today is important, but also what they meant for the people who made them and the people who used them. I think um, it's part of our heritage. Um, and I think it's important to, um, to see it and to share it with others.